In previous videos, we reviewed energy, work, and machines. In this video, we're going to review a concept called ideal machines. We, when we talk about ideal machines, we're talking about machines that are designed and function without producing friction. You may ask, why is that important? Well, when you don't produce friction, you have no heat transfer. And you don't lose any energy to byproducts other than what the machine's supposed to do. So when we look at the ideal machine, the equation that would govern it would be this equation. Work into a machine would equal the work out of a machine. Because there would be no energy loss to friction, heat, air resistance, all the energy would go into working on some object. Now we can break this equation down even further because we know that force and distance are used in work. To explore this equation further, for work in, we can break it down into the force that's going into a machine, and we would multiply that by the distance going into a machine, because we know that when we are operating a simple machine, we have to apply force and apply some type of distance. And on the opposite side, we have a force that is out of the machine, as well as a distance out of the machine. And this should look familiar because work equals force times distance. So basically, we're making work on either side of the equation equal to each other. What is important about this equation is if you've got a large force on one side of the equation, on the opposite side, it has to have a small amount of force. Or if you have a large distance on one side, you should have a small distance on the opposite side. This becomes more clear when we look at an example. On the screen is a crowbar. We use it to open up such as a wooden crate, as you see in the picture there, or try to pry open um, various objects. Um, in this case, we want to open up the box, and we want to open up the lid a total of one hundredth of a meter, 0 0.01 meters. That's a distance. And to accomplish that, we have to move the crowbar a distance of five hundredths of a meter. Now, in doing so, we're going to apply a force that's going to be on the crowbar, the force in, that is 300 newtons. Now, with this information, we should be able to figure out how much force is going to be applied by the crowbar that's out. So let's take a look in terms of our equation. So the force in is 300 newtons. We must multiply that by the distance that's in, and that's five hundredths of a meter. Put our equal sign to get the work out. The work out force we do not know. We'll use the symbol x, and we're going to multiply that by the distance out, which is one hundredth of a meter. Using some algebra, we can multiply both sides, or divide both sides rather, by one hundredth of a meter. On the right side of the equation, one hundredth meter cancels out. On the left side, meters will cancel out, and we can plug that into our calculator. Type three hundred newtons times five hundredths of a meter divided by one hundredth of a meter, and we get a value of one thousand five hundred. So what that tells us is that in order to make this crowbar work, we had to increase the distance by 500 meter. But by doing that, we get in an ideal machine 1,500 newtons worth of force pushing up. This is the out force. Let's look at another example. This problem involves pulleys. 
An input force of 80 newtons is used to lift an object weighing 240 newtons with a system of pulleys. How far down must the rope around the pulleys be pulled in order to lift the object a distance of 1.4 meters? Now, when we solve this problem, we are going to use our equation, and we have to recognize that it is an ideal machine, which means no heat transfer will happen due to friction. So let's plug in our numbers into the equation. Starting with force, there's an input force on the pulleys of 80 newtons. And the output force onto the object is 240 newtons. What this tells us is that there's going to have to be a greater amount of force on, uh, on that object. Thus, the distance on the left side of the equation is going to have to be higher. We don't know how much we have to pull, so our output our input distance, rather, is going to be x, and our output distance is 1.4 meters. In this case, it would be force divided both sides by 80 newtons. Using our calculator, we'll type in 240 newtons times distance of 1.4 meters divided by 80 newtons and we get 4.2 meters. So just as we mentioned at the very beginning, because we had such a high change in force on both sides of this equation, we had to have a higher amount of distance on the left-hand side. Thus, this is how the ideal equation is used to help explain what's happening in machines.